In the year 2020, I first became aware of the existence of this great Mexican photographer. I was looking for interesting photographers to follow and learn from, and that's when I discovered the work of Graciela Iturbide, another fantastic photographer who had been his student. That's how I started researching who he was and began to observe his work, which impressed me from the very beginning. There was something about his photographs that I liked from the outset, it was the tranquility they conveyed, as well as their composition, framing, and black and white tones. I also began to realize that these photos had not been taken lightly. They had been taken very carefully, and it was evident that behind each image was a whole process that included the observation of the elements, the light, and the composition. But let us talk more about who this great photographer was. Manuel Alvarez Bravo was born on February 4, 1902, in Mexico City. His father was a teacher with a keen interest in painting, photography, and writing, he also produced plays, while his grandfather was a professional portraitist. Both influenced young Manuel from an early age. Alvarez Bravo grew up in the historic center of Mexico City behind the cathedral, in one of the many old colonial buildings converted into apartments for the lower classes. He was eight years old when the Mexican Revolution broke out, which years later would have an effect on his photography. From 1908 to 1914, Alvarez Bravo attended primary school at the Patricio Sines Boarding School in Tlalpan, but had to leave school at the age of 12 when his father died. He worked as an office worker in a French textile factory for a while, and later in the Mexican Treasury Department. He studied accounting in a night school, but then switched to art classes at the San Carlos Academy. Alvarez Bravo met Hugo Brame in 1923 and bought his first camera in 1924. He began experimenting with it, with some advice from Brame and subscriptions to photography magazines. In 1927, he met photographer Tina Madotti, whom he admired for her work in magazines such as Forma and Mexican Folkways. Tina introduced him to a series of intellectuals and artists in Mexico City, including photographer Edward Weston, who encouraged him to continue with the craft. During his life, Alvarez Bravo married three times, all with photographers by right. His first wife was Lola Alvarez Bravo, whom he married in 1925, just as he was starting his career as an independent photographer. He taught her the craft, although she did not achieve the fame of Manuel. They had a son, Manuel, and separated in 1934. His second wife was Doris Hayden, and his third was French photographer Colette Alvarez Urbachtel. Despite the many accolades he received throughout his career, Manuel Alvarez Bravo remained humble and always approachable. He was known for his generosity and willingness to share his knowledge with other aspiring photographers. He was also passionate about his native Mexico and worked tirelessly to promote Mexican culture both at home and abroad. He passed away on October 19, 2002, at the age of 100. His legacy continues to inspire and captivate people all over the world. His images are timeless and continue to resonate with audiences today. Let's now learn about the personality and life philosophy of Manuel Alvarez Bravo, in the words of his daughter, Aurelia Alvarez Urbachtel, who is currently the director of the Manuel Alvarez Bravo Association and Archive. On one occasion, some young photographers asked him. Master, how do you become a good photographer? He replied as follows, well, to be a good photographer, you have to read a lot of literature, a lot of poetry, listen to a lot of music, and look, 
look, and look, all the time look. Manuel Alvarez Bravo was a great lover of reading. On the shelves of his bedroom, there were copies in various languages of James Joyce's Ulysses, Robert Musil's The Man Without Qualities, and Mario Vargas Llosa, among others. One of his favorite books until the end of his days was Don Quixote by the famous Spanish writer Miguel de Cervantes Saavedra. We can see literature reflected in his work through his titles. There is a photograph titled The Bird Sings Even Though the Branch Creaks, which alludes to a verse from a poem by Salvador Diaz Myron. The title of the nude photograph, Good Reputation Sleeping, would refer to the saying, Have a good reputation and go to sleep, but it also alludes to Henri Rousseau's painting, The Sleeping Gypsy. Music was also a part of his daily life. After lunch and a nap, he would listen to classical music by composers such as Haydn, Beethoven, Schoenberg, and Mahler, in the living room of his house, while leafing through art books or simply the instruction manual of a camera he had purchased. Later, he would go to his darkroom to work. He used to say that he was a Sunday photographer, although he actually worked throughout the week to support himself financially, so he did not make a living from photography for many decades. He always carried his camera with him and would take photos of what he found interesting while walking to work. Regarding Alvarez Bravo's work, we can see that there is a fundamental humanistic component in his photography, which was also characteristic of a generation of photographers from various parts of the world at that time. He enjoyed photographing the streets, people's lives, people walking, their daily lives. The main characteristic of his work is that, although some photographs may seem like reportage, there is always something additional. Speaking of some of his photographs, here we have one titled, How Small the World Is, which shows two people crossing a sidewalk. He enjoyed observing how people passed by, how they walked, how the light moved. He didn't use to take many photos, he was very measured and it came to pressing the shutter button on his camera. He could spend a long time observing something until the light was just right, and only then would he take the photo. One of his favorite phrases was, there is time. This poignant phrase encapsulates the notion that to do things well, they must be approached with patience and tranquility. It speaks to the importance of taking one's time, avoiding hasty or impulsive actions, and allowing for careful consideration and meticulous execution. Alvarez Bravo's words serve as a reminder that rushing through tasks or decisions often results in mistakes or subpar outcomes, while a measured and deliberate approach can yield excellence. There is time is a timeless reminder to approach life's endeavors with calmness and composure, allowing for the best possible results to unfold. He also used to say that he was an amateur, and never considered himself a professional photographer per se, as he had always pursued photography for pleasure. He believed that everything one does in life should have that foundation of pleasure, while also recognizing the seriousness and importance of the craft. He considered that if a photographer does not have a wealth of experiences, knowledge, and an understanding of what is happening in their country and the world, then that person would have nothing to express, and this is often reflected in superficial works that convey no meaningful message. For Alvarez Bravo, the image is a metaphor for life experiences, the idea of the image as a mirror, reflecting opposites, the concepts of inside and outside. In the end, it turns out that the world is not what we expect.
I would like to conclude this video by discussing the great simplicity and humility that Manuel Alvarez Bravo possessed, despite having won multiple international awards, including the Hasselblad Award, and having exhibited his work in prestigious galleries, including the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Without a doubt, in addition to being a great photographer, he was also a great person who practiced what he preached. In an interview, photographer Pablo Ortiz Monasterio spoke about the teachings he had received from Alvarez Bravo. He mentioned that on one occasion, although never explicitly told him, he implied that to be a better photographer, one must strive to be a better person. It is something that in the life of an artist is related to having a life of principles and ethics in relation to their craft and their own work, and to truly improve, one must undoubtedly be a better person. I will conclude with this quote from Manuel Alvarez Bravo in one of his last interviews, the photographer's gaze exists in continuous contact with life. This statement encapsulates the profound connection Alvarez Bravo had with his subjects and his ability to capture the essence of life through his lens. His legacy as a Mexican photographer of immense talent, integrity, and humanity continues to inspire generations of photographers and art enthusiasts alike. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. This way, you'll always stay up to date with all the videos I produce here. Until the next one. See you later.